Hello students and listeners at home. Welcome to St. Charles College on Nature Online Teaching from the Department of Christian Religious Studies. My name is Juliana Okoye. I am here to continue my teachings on teaching that will foster unity. Today we'll be looking at impartiality and forgiveness. Before the lesson proper, we have to look at the specific objectives. The specific objectives for these lessons are, by the end of this lesson, the student should be able to, one, explain impartiality, two, mention James warning to Christians against partiality, three, compare and contrast the two men used by James to illustrate his teaching on partiality, four, Describe the way, according to James, Christians make distinctions and become judges with evil thoughts. Five, discuss the qualities of the heads of God's kingdom, according to James, based on his teaching against partiality. Six, state how the rich maltreat the poor, according to James' teaching. Seven, quote the royal law, according to James' teaching on partiality. Eight, Explain the law of liberty according, according to James' teaching. 9. Define forgiveness. 10. Discuss forgiveness as a Christian virtue or behavior. 11. Outline how a Christian can manifest forgiveness based on Paul's letter to the Galatians. 12. List at least two moral lessons learned from the lesson. Meaning of impartiality. Partiality can be seen as equal treatment to all. It can also mean opposite of partiality. It can also mean good sense of judgment towards others. Partiality shows favoritism, discrimination, nepotism, tribalism, and racism. Impartiality embraces equity fairness and justice in human interaction. James in his letter warned Christians against partiality, which he observed in the church during his time. He sees partiality in the treatment given to the rich and the poor at that time. He illustrated his teaching on partiality with two men, namely the rich man with gold rings and fine clothing, and a poor man in shabby clothing who came into the assembly or gathering of Christians. Then see specialty as the attention given to the two men when the one who puts on the fine clothing is addressed in a polite way by saying to him, have a seat here, please. And to the poor man, stand there or sit at my feet. By these two actions, Christians have made distinction among themselves and become judges with evil intention by dishonoring the poor man. James also thought that God has chosen those who are poor in the world but rich in faith to be heirs of the kingdom which he had promised to those who love him. James put this in a question form. And then, to this question, what James asked can be seen in the early apostles, that the early followers of Jesus, the men that the 12 men he chose to be his uh, apostles. These people, they were not rich in terms of material money or influence but they had faith and because of that faith that they had they were rich in faith and because of this faith that they had in jesus christ they signed it with their blood how did they sign it with their blood they had faith and were ready under persecution and even unto death to still profess that they have faith in jesus christ James added that it was not that it was the rich who oppressed the poor. How do the rich oppress the poor? They oppress them, they drag them to court and blaspheme the honorable name of God. 
James also reminded Christians to fulfill the loyal, royal law according to the scripture that says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. James also said that partiality is a sin and whoever shows partiality is convicted by the law as a transgressor or sinner. In this sense, James is reminding Christians that even when you keep all the commandments of God and that of the church and obey all the rules and regulations, even in your school, or you obey the civil laws in the society, that as long as you manifest partiality in your actions, you are still a sinner. Christians also should strive to keep the whole law or the decalogue, but who fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. If you do not commit adultery, but do kill, you have become a transgressor of the law. Jay said that Christians should speak and act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. What is this law of liberty? The law of liberty states, do to others as we like to be treated. By this statement, James is not saying that Christians cannot be, cannot be satisfied with simple obeying the commandments, that's the decalogue, or respecting their earthly masters, but will, in order not to get into trouble, Christian must be free and be volunteers whose only law is their commitment to Jesus Christ. What is this commitment to Jesus Christ? By being a model, as Christians, we are followers of Christ. And you know that when Christ was on earth, he did not show any partiality. He treated both the rich and the poor equally. And with that, James concluded that judgment is without mercy to one who has not shown any mercy. And you remember that in the Beatitude, Jesus taught in the, on the Sermon on the Mount that blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And finally, we say that, yes, mercy will triumph or rejoices over judgment. In other words, no matter what happens, we should always, as Christians, show mercy. The next topic that we conclude our teachings on, teachings that will foster unity is forgiveness. And the person who wrote on this forgiveness is Paul. Now, let's look at the meaning of forgiveness. Forgiveness is the pardon granted to an offender, which will make his offense to be overlooked by the person being offended. It is also an act of mercy granted to an offender, which could restore the broken relationship. Forgiveness comes when one has offended another, and the one offended decides to show mercy and the Pardon. Forgiveness in a, is an aspect of Christian behavior of virtue because God forgives us all our sins. And again, Jesus also made it clear that God will forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us when his disciples saw him to teach them how to pray. Finally, we say that it is human to offend and divine to forgive. What do we mean by that? All of us are human beings. We have our strengths and weaknesses. But if we have the Spirit of God, no matter the number of times somebody offends us, we will readily forgive that individual. Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, advised Christians that if any man is overtaken in any sin or trespass, 
that those who are spiritual should restore the person in a spirit of uh, gentleness and not in a spirit of being very harsh or condemning the person. Rather, the person should be restored back in a sense of uh, gentleness. He therefore concluded in his teachings to the Galatians that Christians should bear one another's problem. And in doing this, we fulfill the law of uh, Jesus Christ. Having come to the end of this lesson, we have to look at the moral lesson that we have learned. One, he said that impartiality promotes peace and unity in the society. If you come to a society and there is uh, no partiality, then everybody will be at uh, peace and then there will be unity in the society. And that will now complete on our teaching that will foster unity. Again, we have to look at partiality as a sin before God. By discrimination, by showing partiality, by showing favoritism or nepotism, we are showing partiality. And we say that partiality is the same before God. Then, thirdly, we should treat everybody equal. Everybody is equal before God. The rich, the poor. After all, when God was creating man, he said, let us make man in our own image and uh, likeness. There was never a time he said, let us make those who are to be rich and those who are to be poor. And because of that, everybody is equal before God, both the rich and the poor. Fourth, Christians should shun discrimination. What is this discrimination that we are talking about? Discrimination is unmerited favor you show to somebody that you like. And then the favor, you disfavor the other person that you did not uh, like. And we say that discrimination is not a Christian virtue. Distinction between persons is not a Christian behavior. Assuming that you have a party to throw, throw this party for everybody both the rich and the, the poor. The rich will come in their richness, while the poor man will now come, and you don't expect anything from the poor man because you threw that uh, party. Then we say there should be no forgive, um, there is no limit to forgiveness. Yes, Jesus, when he was ministering, when Peter asked him, Lord, how many times will my friend or somebody sin against me? To show that forgiveness has no limitation, Jesus gave him the number and said, you should forgive that person 70 times 7. And again, we say that forgiveness restores broken relationships. If you now forgive somebody who has offended you from your heart, the person will be very, very happy. And then the person will now see that you have no grudges or grievances against him anymore. And then the re broken relationship will now be restored and you start being friends again instead of uh, enemies. We now look at Unforgiving spirits. That unforgiving spirit leads to destruction. Yes. When you ha don't have this unforgiving spirit, you tend to revenge what somebody has done to you, or you, you tend to retaliate. And then in this retaliation, even um, in the Bible, where you say a tooth for a tooth, you may even try because that person removed a, a tooth from you. In the process of trying to remove a tooth, you may even remove the 39 teeth in that person's uh, mouth. And then finally, 
Forgiveness brings joy, peace, and unity in the society. We now look at the next line, which is the evaluation. Now, the summary for this lesson is, God desires unity in the church and among his people. There are teachings that will foster unity in the society. Such teachings are faith and works, humility, impartiality, and forgiveness. Every Christian must cherish and pursue love and unity in his life. Now we have to look at the evaluation. Number one, what is impartiality? Two, list the different categories of partiality. Three, describe how James illustrated partiality among Christians. Four, what is the royal law according to James' teaching? Five, why did you understand as the law of liberty based on James' teaching? Six, how do you explain this question asked by James in his teaching on partiality? Has God not chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom of which he has promised to those who love him? Seven. Seven. In what two ways do the rich maltreat the poor according to James' teaching on partiality? Eight. Quote the royal law according to James. Nine, what do you understand by the law of liberty according to James? Ten, what do you understand by the term forgiveness? Eleven, how can a Christian, according to Paul in his letter to the Galatians, restore a man who had been overtaken in any trespass? For further inquiry, you can contact me on my WhatsApp contact, which is 080-338-10240. Remain blessed and keep safe.